Konnichiwa! Many of you who have followed my channel for a long time have sometimes noticed this computer on the background of many of my videos. It is a Lenovo ThinkPad. I bought this computer a couple of years ago. Uh, it's, it was used and I bought it from eBay. And the reason I bought this computer was because I am a dance teacher. And uh, during the time I, I teach Israeli folk dance, when I conduct my lessons, I play their mu I play their music. And for a long time, I used this MP3 player to play my music. But after using it for a couple of years, it broke. So I had to figure out something else, and I bought this computer to replace that purpose to work as a media center. The modern way to play music nowadays is to use a Bluetooth speaker like this one. I actually use this one in my dance lessons, but there is a problem, because my computer, this computer doesn't have Bluetooth support. I cannot use this computer to play music through that speaker. And I solved that problem by using an Android phone instead. This is my Android phone, it's a OnePlus, OnePlus 3, and I have a VLC application installed here, and I can select my songs here, and they will play through that speaker. And that's how I did for, a, for some time. <clears throat> Let's say about two years, maybe? But it is a little bit inconvenient solution sometimes. So I wanted to find a way to make Bluetooth work on this ThinkPad. And to solve that problem, I bought a Bluetooth card like this from internet. It's a mini PCIe card, which inserts into this laptop. Let me show you how. When I open this laptop, there is um, actually on the back side, there are a couple of screws that I have to open to get access to the engine compartment. So let's open these screws now. There's one here, one here. Just drop the screws on the table. Now when I open this one, I can take the mouse cover out and the keyboard, co keyboard comes out like that. And we get to see the engine compartment. And inside here we have a slot. This in here is the wireless networking card. And this came with the computer. But there is also <coughs> another PCIe slot down here. Let me see if I can figure out a way to insert it without my hands blocking the view. Put it there, it snaps into place. There are no screws to hold it in place, but uh, what can you do? And these cables, which are for the antennas, can I focus on that? All right. And my hands are, of course, on the way, so you can't see a thing. Ah, filming is hard. Of course, you can't see anything. Well, I show you the finished result when that is done. Snap that into place. Now they are both in place. Okay, so that card, even though it uh, flaps like this, it's now connected there. Let's put the keyboard also in there. So connect them. Just lay them in the positions that they were in. Let's power this thing on and see what happens. Power on. And it's powering on. Oops! Unauthorized network card is plugged in. Power off and remove the mini PCI network card. Uh, 13D3 slash 3304. System is halted. This is asshole design. I mean, this is exactly the sort of thing that you would do if you wanted to turn your customers into your enemies. What well, this means that you cannot plug custom hardware into the laptop because it's complaining. <coughs> Of course, there are also these little tiny Bluetooth adapters which plug in directly into the USB port, which I could of course use. And I have tried this 
actually once or twice, but there is a problem because when it's on this side, it protrudes out from the laptop. And when I carry this laptop in my backpack, this is kind of dangerous. It may get broken, but it is also so small that if I put it in, in my pocket or anything, it, it gets easily lost. So I wanted to have this internal chip instead. What causes that problem with this laptop is actually the BIOS chip. The BIOS, not the chip itself, but the program on the, on the BIOS. There are many ways to solve that problem. You could patch the BIOS or you could replace the BIOS entirely. And I think I'm going to go by the second route, replacing the BIOS entirely. So I'm opening the cover again and let's have a look at the BIOS. The BIOS is somewhere under this plastic cover. So I have to take this plastic out. Okay, I, it, it is possible that I don't need to do more work than that because I think this chip may be actually the flash chip that contains the BIOS. So we are going to reprogram this BIOS chip. The BIOS chip is a flash ROM that speaks the SPI protocol. We need a way to connect the two that, but that BIOS chip, so we are going to use this little clamp. To should be right there. Then we need something that speaks the SPI protocol, and this Raspberry just happens to fit that role. So let's take it out. We have Raspberry Pi and uh, it's a Model 3B board and it looks like this. To use this Raspberry we are going to need several things. First we are going to need a memory card. This here is a USB stick. I have already installed the Raspbian operating system on this memory card, so I'm just going to plug it in into this slot here, like so. The next thing I'm going to need is a keyboard, and I have a keyboard right here. Then I'm going to need a mouse, so let's plug that in. Done. Then I'm going to need a power source, so let's do power. I have a power here, but before I do that, I also need one more thing, which is a display. So let's plug the display in. Display in, power in, plug it in, and see if we get anything on the screen. I probably have to select, okay, it selected automatically the source. Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop powered by Raspbian. Release June 2018. Looks good. But the difficult part is only beginning. On the Raspberry I have a Flash ROM utility which I have downloaded separately. So to make a connection between these pins here and these pins here, I have to use cables. So black could be ground, red could be power, mossy and miso could be brown and white. And then chip select could be green. Alright, beautiful. And now figure out where to connect these. Ah. Left edge. Mossy. Mossy is the next one, so that would be right here. Then Miso. Miso would be this one, this white one. It goes here. So it goes here. So we have this now. This is the connection. Let's hope it works. Um. 
Okay, so I found out what causes the reach to fail. I actually have to give the flash ROM command the, the speed parameter. So let's do that and that should be SPI speed if I remember correctly. So let's try that and read into flash one.bin. And now it reads properly. Reading flash. And then do the same again to a different file to double check and make sure there were no, no errors. Maybe do it the third time. Okay, and now we're, let's verify those binaries. They are all the same, so the reading worked. So the next thing I, is I need to download core boot. So let's do that. Let's download core boot and let's make it a shallow clo clone. So maybe it downloads faster. If I were a smart man, I would have downloaded and built this before I began making this video, but uh, I can always cut it in post process. So that's the download. That downloading is done. So then uh, have a, uh, let's try it again. A core boot. It's so near module update. Download all the dependencies. And then when the tools have been downloaded, then let's do some building. Sometimes this keyboard disconnects from it for whatever reason, I don't quite know why. But in any case, let's build. Build that tool. That was quick. Install that. Then really that's everything. Huh. And then copy the flash regions that it just read into here. And then configure this. Oh. So before we build a core boot, we have to install some dependencies first. This kind of resembles Linux kernel configuration. General setup. Um, a low building with any, okay, there's so much stuff here. And then when the configuration is done, then compile. Oh dear, it's stuck again. It's trying to make an IPv6 connection, I believe. Let's see if I can do anything about that. No, 
No, it should be disabled, so what is going on? Okay, that is ugly. Even though I have said here that IPv6 should be disabled for this interface, it is still creating IPv6 address for my wireless interface, so I don't know what's going on, but this is a way that it removes the IPv6 address as soon as it appears. It's ugly, but you do what you have to do. Okay, and now it built that step, and it says me, you can now run IS, IASL ACPI compiler from that directory. I don't know what I should do about that information, but let's proceed with the next step of the building of the BIOS. Which seems to be done. So now let's build the actual BIOS. Build Lenovo X220. Ah. Let's see what it built. Build slash. This is the thing. All right. Let's see if the flash thing still works. It does not work, except I have to give the speed parameter. Uh, no, probably my connections are a little bad. Let's adjust the clamp. The clamp right here. Put it back there again. Very carefully. making sure to connect the pins properly. So let's see. One more time let's read the flash. Just to make sure it works reliably. Reading flash. Reading flash done. And that is the checksum exactly the same as the previous reads. So now it is time to write. Here we go. Writing BIOS into the laptop now. Erasing. There's no going back now. Well, there is going back because I can always write back their old contents. So it's not true to say that there is no going back. Erasing done, verifying. It's now verifying that the contents were written properly. Verified. Excellent. Let's put back the laptop now and see how it works. Whether it works at all. So take the clamp out. Don't need it now. You are ready. So in the beginning I should probably just put these lightly here and check whether it starts at all instead of putting all the screws in and then finding out something is wrong and having to do that all over again. So let's do just that. Put uh, um, power in like so see what happens when it now powers on. What does happen now? Power on. See BIOS. Yeah, it seems to work. Ask for boot menu. Booting from hard disk. Booting from hard disk. 
I got Linux, but starting the graphical system... Okay, it's loading now. It was low for some reason. Take this here. Is there a connection? Let me make a connection. Sounds good. <coughs> And it works. Excellent. And then make sure the keyboard is in the proper position before I close everything. So, one more thing. Because there was no screw to hold down the... the hold on. The Bluetooth card. was no... There was no screw to hold this down, so I put some little bit, little bit of duct tape there to hold it down. It's an ugly solution, but hopefully it works. So, that should be all there. Let's make sure the clamps are in their proper positions. Are they? They don't look right to me. I guess it will fix itself when I put the screws in. So, so tighten them up. Tighten them really quick. There's one more thing, because the plastic here is a little bit broken. I have to insert the missing piece manually. Manual override. And that should be everything. Put the battery back in. Like so, turn the thing back over and see if it still runs on the battery power. Battery power, okay, this doesn't feel secure. I don't know what's going on with that. Doesn't feel secure at all. Did something fail to be connected properly? This one is properly, this is properly, so I don't know. In any case, let's boot it up and see, just once more, the beauty. Ask for boot menu, yes. And we have a desktop. Well, not desktop yet, but if I run StarTex, then we have desktop. Desktop. Which is taking a little bit of time, which it didn't do before. It was pretty much instant when it went to graphical mode. It was pretty much instant, but now it's not instant. There is... 50 seconds of delay or something. I don't know what, why is that. It's just a blank screen and then suddenly it appears. I don't know what's, what was going on. It says the manufacturer is Lenovo product blah blah blah. UID if that works. Looks okay. Bias information vendor core boot. Excellent. Lenovo. All that seems to be alright. IBM Think IBM ThinkPad embedded controller. I don't know what's that. Memory is there. And there's hardly anything else, which is interesting. So there we go. And that concludes just showing how easy or difficult. How easy or difficult it is to set up a custom BIOS. So here are the components that I needed for the job. There is this uh, Soik clip which I bought from AliExpress for like one or two euros. 
Uh, it came with an adapter where I can plug in these wires. Uh, these wires I bought years ago from DX, Deal Extreme, and they are generic use for anything. And then there's this Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, which I got for free, but uh, it's like 50 euros or something like that. And that's pretty much all I needed for this. So if you found it interesting to see how to liberate your computers from ASI9 business machines, I mean ASI9 business software, then do share the video to anyone you think would like to see it. And post your comments in the comment section below. And like and you know the things. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.